10 disturbing conspiracies about kids' cartoons. Number 10. SpongeBob is a radioactive mutant. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? Well, according to one conspiracy theory, a group of radioactive mutants. This theory comes from the fact that Bikini Bottom, where SpongeBob SquarePants is set, is named after the real-life coral reef Bikini Atoll, as was confirmed by Tom Kenny, the voice of SpongeBob. Bikini Atoll was a popular site of nuclear arms testing during the 1940s and 1950s, including the Bravo test in 1954, which was a thousand times more powerful than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The animated series could therefore be a commentary on the dangers of nuclear testing, hence the strange collection of creatures at Bikini Bottom. Furthermore, theorists have suggested that Sandy's spacesuit could actually be a protective hazmat suit, and also that Krusty Krab uses radioactive materials to cook their burgers, which is why they can cook underwater. Number 9. The Smurfs are racist anti-Semites The Smurfs have been a popular presence on our TV screens since 1981, and existed as a comic book series for more than two decades before that. Many people have drawn a fairly obvious parallel between the white pointed hats of the blue creatures and white supremacist group the KKK, but there is a conspiracy theory that delves even deeper into the idea that the Smurfs could be racist. The theory draws on the fact that the main villain of the show, Gargamel, is a dark-haired, large-nosed, money-loving character, similar to the derogatory stereotype of Jewish people. What's more, Gargamel even has a cat called Azrael, which, suspiciously, is the same name as the Jewish Angel of Death. And then there's this ridiculous scene, in which the characters appear to give a Nazi salute. Number 8. Disney is pushing a sexual agenda The Walt Disney Company has been producing animated family favourites since it was founded in 1923. However, there's a theory that Walt Disney had disturbing intentions behind his filmmaking, which have permeated the company's movies ever since. The theory is that subliminal sexual references have been inserted into Disney movies to corrupt children and encourage promiscuous behaviour. This may sound absolutely crazy, but the theory is drawn from quite a large number of examples, such as the word sex apparently being shown in The Lion King, or a character with what may be an erection appearing in The Little Mermaid. You can even hear a creepy sexual message in Aladdin. So, could Disney really have been pushing a perverted sexual agenda? Number 7. Winnie the Pooh is psychologically disturbed We all know that Eeyore, the gloomy grey donkey from Winnie the Pooh, was clinically depressed. But what about the other residents of the Hundred Acre Wood? An article by the Canadian Medical Association argued that each of the characters from the beloved children's stories has a diagnosable mental condition. Piglet, for example, has generalized anxiety disorder and a stammer, Tigger has ADHD, and Rabbit has obsessive compulsive disorder. Owl has dyslexia, hence why he often swaps or misses letters when he writes, and Pooh has obsessive fixations, most notably on honey. There's also the theory that Christopher Robin, the only human character in Winnie the Pooh, is schizophrenic, seeing as the characters are all imaginary creations based on his childhood toys. Number 6. The Care Bears are Voodoo Gods The Care Bears is a show about adorable teddy bears who live in a magical cloud city in the sky. Sounds sickeningly sweet, but could there be darker forces at play? Conspiracy theorists have picked up on the similarities between the name Care Bears and Carrefour, an ancient Loire voodoo spirit. But it goes deeper than that. If you look into the kind of terminology that the Care Bears use, there are even more frightening similarities between them and voodoo gods. The characters often refer to each other and the children watching as friends, similar to how the Voodoo Loire are often called friendly spirits or friends by their followers. Furthermore, the bear's tummy symbols that represent their personalities, such as a crescent moon for bedtime bear and a rainbow for cheer bear, share a worrying resemblance with symbols that represent the various Voodoo gods. Number 5. Tom and Jerry is Nazi Propaganda a worrying conspiracy about one of the world's longest-running cartoons suggests that Tom and Jerry could actually have been a tool of pro-Nazi propaganda. The show began in 1940 and became popular during the height of the Second World War. The choice of character names, therefore, is somewhat suspicious, seeing as Tommy's is slang for British soldiers and Jerry's is slang for German soldiers. 
What's most disturbing about this is that Jerry is the good guy who uses his superior intelligence to defeat Tom's evil schemes. All other cartoons at the time would name their animal characters things like Sniffles and Droopy. Even more curious is that Tom was originally called Jasper, so some theorists have questioned why it needed to be changed. Also, it is worth noting that most British and American shows during this era did overtly include anti-Nazi propaganda, so it's rather weird that Tom and Jerry didn't join in with this campaign. Could they perhaps have been campaigning for the other side? Number 4. The Flintstones are from the future Although you would have good reason to assume that long-running cartoon The Flintstones is set during the Stone Age, there is an intriguing alternate interpretation. The Flintstone family are living in a post-apocalyptic future. The idea is that Fred Flintstone is in actual fact a super-evolved human, possessing superhuman strength and speed. He also only has four fingers, which ties in with the evolutionary theory that humans will eventually de-evolve their little finger, as it doesn't serve as great a function as the other fingers. And then there's the line in the opening credits describing the Flintstones as the modern Stone Age family. Bedrock society certainly does look to have modern influences, with the characters driving cars and watching TV, so maybe this isn't that ludicrous after all. Number 3. Timmy's on Antidepressants The Fairly Odd Parents is a highly successful animated series about the life of average kid Timmy Turner and his magic little fish which grants his every wish. But could his fish-slash-fairy-slash-pencil godparents be a metaphor for something more sinister? Let's look at Timmy's life for a second. The ten-year-old is pretty much neglected by his parents, tortured by his babysitter, and bullied at school by both his classmates and teacher. His life is, in a word, miserable. Therefore, it's perhaps not all that implausible to believe that Timmy could be depressed. One theory is that Cosmo and Wanda are not magical fairies at all, but antidepressants prescribed to help Timmy deal with his dismal life. When Timmy abuses his godparents' power, he always suffers the repercussions, much like those misusing narcotics would do. Number 2. Dead Ed and Eddie Cartoon Network's Ed, Ed and Eddie, which ran from 1999 to 2009, appears at first to be a harmless series about a group of preteen boys living on a cul-de-sac in the fictional town of Peach Creek. But when you think about it, there's something slightly off about it. Most notably, there's the fact that the character's world consists entirely of that cul-de-sac, which, bizarrely, doesn't seem to include any adults. A popular theory about the series is that the cul-de-sac is actually purgatory, and the children all died in different eras. The theory even comes complete with suggestions for how each of them could have died. Eddie, for example, drowned in a river in 1939, and character Naz was murdered in 1979. This theory is based on the idea that the characters all dress as if from different time periods, and also references their corpse-like blue-green tongues. Number 1. The Rugrats are dead Popular Nickelodeon cartoon Rugrats centres around a group of toddlers and their mischievous antics, but maybe this iconic 90s series isn't quite what it seems. A popular conspiracy theory has arisen from the depths of the internet, suggesting that the toddlers are all figments of Angelica Pickle's demented delusions. This childhood-ruining theory explains that all of the Rugrats, except Angelica, actually died long before the story began. Tommy, for example, was stillborn. This explains why his dad, Stu, spends all his time tragically making toys for the son that never lived. The DeVilles ended up having an abortion, and, as Angelica never found out whether it would have been a boy or a girl, she conjured up the idea of the twins, Phil and Lil, to help her cope. And everyone's favourite goofball, Chucky, died along with his mother, who succumbed to a terminal illness shortly after Chucky was born, making his dad into the nervous wreck we see on screen. As a coping mechanism for her grief, Angelica has created the baby's personalities, so she can escape from the horrors of reality. If you found this video interesting, then head over to Dave and John the Home of Factuals, where this week we had an episode about Cristiano Ronaldo, whether you can marry a horse, and whether or not Russia are planning on wiping out humanity now. Insanity, mate. Is it? And make sure you go over and vote Team Dave. I'm only five points behind him. Nah, don't vote so for him. Look do at that him. now in the car. He's a disgrace. And we'll see you next time. Then you lash out if he wins again. Why have you said that? Wow. Well.